Hey everybody, Wally Renee here from the Medical University of South Carolina College of Dental Medicine. I'm going to show you guys how to hollow embase your models uh, the way that I do it, and I've been doing it for a few years this way. The first thing that you could do is you need to trim all the junk off of your model. Um, you could select an area, then hit B to smooth border, and then hit X to delete. But I don't like doing that because it still leaves a lot of extraneous little floaters and, and rough areas in my opinion. So what I like to do is just use the select tool, start outside of the model, um, and start clicking and holding and then drag into the model and then circle around the area or kind of highlight the area you want to discard and hit X. Um, by doing this, it always keeps you in the select tool by hitting X every time and it could be really quick to just delete uh, extraneous borders, folds, creases, and anything that you don't really want or even if you thought that you wanted it, the software doesn't like it so you gotta delete it. So I'm going through just really quickly and I'm getting rid of that. Also get rid of any like drop offs like that there. Um, intraoral scans are gonna leave you with all sorts of little things like that. And there we go. Um, make sure you accidentally don't select something on the contralateral side and delete it by accident. So just always be checking for that like I just did there. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to back up a step to get back my third molar there. Okay, so uh, now what we need to do, guys, is select the whole entire model by uh, clicking and then hitting Control A, okay? Or um, I'm sorry, clicking, double clicking the model, and it should turn it all um, orange. And then hit I to invert, and then hit um, Discard or X to delete whatever floaters were out there in space. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your sculpt tools and go to robust smooth and start smoothing the border. You can't have any little triangles out in space like that. Um, if you do, go ahead and repeat the process of deleting that part. What you're trying to do here is to achieve a perfectly smooth border. Uh, Mesh Mixer loves smooth borders to do any kind of features that you want to do, such as transform or Boolean operations or um, plane cuts and remeshed fills. Everything has to be smooth, so I'm just really quickly going around making sure that it's nice and smooth before I try to transform that border. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the blue border of the model. It's the tiny little blue line. You can barely see it. Double click and it should highlight um, a, a band all the way around the model. Then I'm going to go to transform. Now, if you don't get the compass of tools here, it's because you had something Mesh Mixer didn't like, like a fold or a crease, and you need to smooth your border more. Um, it will show up as like a red ring of death with no compass. But now I have this uh, transform ability here because I smoothed my border, and I'm going to extend this giant massive ridiculous um, border. Cow patty there. Okay, so um, play around with the, the transform feature to get it the way that you want it. Um, you could have spent the time initially to orientate the model um, on the build platform appropriately or the grid in Mesh Mixer so the transform tool is, is correct in relation to the XYZ axis, but I just transform it. Now, if you go ahead and try to plane cut this, it's not going to work. Um, you're going to get an open mesh, so let's just go ahead and do it so I could show you. So I, I then went to plane cut to snip off that giant um, base that I made, and it's not going to seal that off because it's too rough. So what you need to do is double click, um, it's gonna remember those face groups, so double click, click your base, and it's gonna highlight that whole base orange. If, so make sure you um, double click. If you don't double click, it's just gonna highlight one little spot. So see how it highlighted the whole entire base all the way around as orange? You could also double click the border if you want to, but it's unnecessary. Once you have it um, clicked, you're going to go to deform and smooth. And what that's going to do, it's going to smooth out that whole entire base to the point where Mesh Mixer is going to love it for when you do things like plain cut and make hollow and then cut again. So here you can see it's smooth. Then I'm going to go to edit plain cut. Okay. And I'm going to slice. Click the, the big blue arrow to switch between what half you want to keep right there, that kind of hidden blue arrow. And I'm gonna do my drag drag down. Now, if it's jumping too far for you guys with the transform tool, hit the up arrow as you're, tra as you're clicking on one of the arrows and it will give you um, a more fine tuned ticker. But now that you see that we sliced it, it created that flat base there. Now you could just go ahead and print this solid like this. In fact, I like doing that because the models are stronger. Um, ignore that what I just did there, that was by mistake. Now, but a lot of people like to hollow to save like 10 cents of resin. So 
I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to go to the hollow feature. I like to have my uh, model be at least 1.5 millimeters thick for strength. Um, so you're going to set that offset to 1.5 millimeters and hit update hollow. And you are now going to hit accept. Super cool. Now you could add drain holes and print it like that. Or what most people are doing is they're then slicing it again. But now because we smooth that patty, that base, when we slice here, it's going to be solid. Had we not done that step where we um, selected the base and hit def uh, deform smooth, it would not seal that off right here. And it would be an open mesh if you're ever wondering why it does that. But I still don't like this because if you print flat on the build platform, it's going to build up pressure from unpolymerized resin trapped in the hollow. Um, you're going to save a ton of resin probably printing this way compared to solid um, because <clears throat> you're really just printing a shell, but you have to be able to drain the resin. So I go ahead and add this uh, cylinder from the mesh mixer file. It's pretty easy to do. Now you could save cylinders if you want. I just quickly <clears throat> make this giant thing, not being very precise here. Um, just making sure it protrudes halfway through. So you want to use half of the circle. Anything more than half, you're going to have to have some um, areas that are going to be harder to print. So just half of the circle. Duplicate and then retransform <clears throat> so that you could have some posterior drains. Um, like I said, this will cause print failure on a lot of different printers, uh, depending on the suction forces, because that liquid resin is trapped in there, and it, a lot of printers just don't like that um, because it creates some pressure issues. I'm going to duplicate that one and transform it to the uh, contralateral side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine by Control Shift clicking all three of those cylinders and hit Combine. Then I'm going to click the maxillary model first and then hit command and click the um, combine tubes and then go to Boolean difference. The pop-up window starts automatically and asks you what do you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Boolean operation here. Now Boolean is a little technique sensitive, but I, I don't have any issues with it. As long as everything's smooth, Boolean works for me um, on, on my computer all the time. I Boolean all day long, I feel like. So here we go. There is the um, hollowed model with drain ports ready to print flat on the build platform. Um, so you would just go to file export as a binary STL file and then load it into your slicer software and you're good to go. So I hope this helped you guys. This is how I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, but I would always struggle with um, when I would slice it, whether or not it would make a solid mesh there um, using the plain cut feature or even when I would hollow and then slice sometimes it would be an open mesh like I said that all has to do with the ability to double click that extruded base and hit um, deform smooth and then once you do that you're never going to have any errors again so I hope this helps thanks guys